I can do the bolero with this giant towel. <laughs> hey everybody, Joy here. Yes, it's me, and I'm back. I'm back. I have so many different things I'm doing. I just, like, well, I don't know if I should tell them this, and I don't know if I should tell them that, and if I start here, how will I end there? And, and so, just consider this a long chat about what I'm doing and not doing, okay? <laughs> How do you like my towels for my RV? My RV, number two, now this is number two, the one we're keeping. It's very white. The pillows are covered in this white, kind of an off-white. The chairs are covered in this. The bedspread's very white. And so I don't want any of that white stuff in there because I don't want to be scared to make spaghetti, be scared to ask somebody to come have pork and beans or ketchup and mustard or whatever and go, I don't get it on the chair, I don't get it on the pillow. Because when we sell the coach, if we sell the coach, we will want it to be as new as possible and as original as possible. So I'm taking out the pillows. I have taken out the bedspread. We have taken out the two dining room chairs. And I have decided it's boring with all that white and off-white and cream colors in there and I want some color. I didn't know what color, but I really am into turquoise these days. I just love turquoise. I did not know I was going to use turquoise. I just know I like turquoise. And so one night I thought, Oh, I need to get some towels. I don't want to use those same towels I used in the other RV. Um, they were a dark teal. And I'd like to just sell those with the RV because I fixed them a certain way. I'll tell you about that in a minute. So Jerry wanted to go to Sherman, 45 miles from here, to go to Best Buy because the TV that came with RV number two didn't work. I mean, it works and you can watch TV, but it can't connect to the Internet. I mean, we even took it out of the coach, brought it in the house, and it still couldn't connect to the Internet. He spent hours and hours and hours and hours and hours. So he said, this is ridiculous. Let's buy a new TV. So we went to Best Buy. Well, right next door to Best Buy in Sherman, Texas, is a store called TJ Maxx. I'm not much of a TJ Maxx shopper, M-A-X-X. -X. I'm not much of an anything shopper, really. I just unless it's a fabric store or a pattern store. <laughs> and I'm pretty cured of that at this point, too. So uh, I thought, oh my gosh, TVs are so boring. I don't want to go in there. So I said, hey, can I go into this TJ Maxx store? I said, maybe I'll find something in there for the RV. He said, oh, sure, no problem. Of course, we both have our cell phones. So I started walking around. And of course, I'm not into the jewelry, and I'm not into the perfume, I'm not into the clothes, and I'm not into the shoes. And I thought, I wonder if they have any towels in here. Or rugs. I needed rugs, I thought. Well, maybe they've got some rugs in here. So that's what I was really looking for. So I walked way, 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 way back to the far corner. You know, that's always where it is. <laughs> Whatever you want, it's in the far corner of the store. Remember Lowe's? What was it we were looking for that day? Oh, that, um, that pool noodle stuff. So anyway, I walk all the way back. I even took a picture. I took a picture and I sent it to Viv. So I'm going to put the picture right here. So, of course, I wheeled my cart up to that and I went, oh, look at those turquoise towels. <laughs> and they only had four of these. They had four of these, they had two of the hand towels, and they had like eight of the so-called washcloths. The washcloths are weird nowadays. They just take one of these and they cut it into a rectangle, and it, it is, I like skinny, thin washcloths, so I'm not crazy about the washcloths. <laughs> but I thought, I wonder if Jerry could like this color, because it's turquoise. And I actually had been on my computer the night before on Amazon and on on what's that bed bath and beyond looking for turquoise towels I couldn't find any and turquoise sheets maybe I was looking for sheets but anyway I was having a real problem finding turquoise so I thought 
Well, maybe it's going out of style or something. So anyway, I'm back there minding my own business and you see what I walked up to. So I called Jerry. I said, hey, I want you to come over here and look at these towels. He said, honey, if you like them, buy them. I said, well, I want to make sure you like them. He said, I don't care if you like them, buy them. So I bought the towels and the washcloths and I put them in my cart. So then I had to think about well, okay, I've got these turquoise towels. What am I going to do for a bedspread? Because I took off the white bedspread, right? It's king size bed. Took off the bedspread. We're going to wrap it up in um, plastic and store it um, for when we sell the coach, and then we'll put it back in there, and it'll be brand new, never used, because the people that owned it before us never used it either. What am I going to do for a bedspread now? I don't have any bedspread. <laughs> oh, now, this was last week when this all started. So then we went to Louisville. Well, guess what's in Louisville, my friends? <laughs> ah, and I have known this was there. I actually bought my long arm from a salesperson there that works from AP, works for APQS, but she doesn't like me. She doesn't like me at all, and she avoids me like the plague. I got Terry introduced to her, and Terry bought a long arm from her. And when she came to put Terry's long arm in, I was there. I was going to be there. I wanted to watch her. I was all excited about it. She said, Joy, you need to go back home. My son's going to come with you, and he's going to service your long arm. I'm like, oh, really? I didn't know it needed service. She said, oh, it's just a checkup. He'll just make sure everything's running right. Well, she didn't want me there. So you know why? <laughs> She's my complete opposite personality. I am a perfectionist, a total perfectionist. It takes me three, four hours to load a quilt. Now, I don't quilt for anybody else. She does. She does it for a business. She can't take three to four hours to load a quilt. I understand that. But I am not going to just throw it on there and half pin it and half straighten it out and half put it in the center and just hang the top down. And She's just very, very careless, in my opinion. But basically, they just do panos, and they do quilt after quilt, and they got to get them done as fast as they can. Well, when you're at my house working for me, it's different. I want it done correctly. I want you to take your time. I paid you $500, number one, to come here and help me hook up this machine. <laughs> and you're supposed to put a quilt on it and show me how to quilt it. So she would try to do it in her, I call it half-ass, way. And I would say, oh, no, I don't want it like that. I, I want it pinned like this, and I want it in the center. I want it lined up with the center, and I want this, and I want that. Well, I just drove her crazy. Just drove her crazy. You know, she probably had to spend more time with me than she wanted to, had to take her longer, and I was super, super ignorant of a lot of it. But I did know how I wanted to load the quilt. So she left that day, and I could tell she didn't really care much for me. So then years later, you know, ran into her again. And then she basically threw me out of Terry's studio and told me to come back here, which was, her son's adorable. In fact, her son and I got along great. And I said to her one time when I was in her store with Terry and she was showing Terry stuff, I said, oh, your son's so adorable, I'm gonna kidnap him. She said, well, I'll just call the police. I thought, lady, I'm kidding. Consider it a compliment, I like your son. But some people just don't get me, you know? Do y'all get me? A lot of people don't get me. My own family doesn't get me. <laughs> oh, heaven help us. So anyway, this store is half a mile away from the RV repair place in Louisville, Texas. It's called Quilt Country. I think it has a new owner than it used to have back then. It's called Quilt Country. And pardon the way I look today, I'm, I'm dressed for outside today, and there went my towel. So, we have been there, this will be our third time going there, and the first two times I didn't even go to that store, because I didn't want to run into her. So the store is such that you walk in the front of it, and it's all the material, and all the cutting tables, and all the quilts on the walls, and then way in the back is a separate room with a separate door, and she's back in there. So since I was wanting to do something about my coach and a bedspread, I thought, I'll just make a quilt for the top of the bed. I'll go over there to that quilt country store. 
So I did. Jerry took me over there in the Jeep. He stayed in the Jeep outside and I went in the store. So I walked in. <clears throat> I had my towel with me. <laughs> I had just bought these an hour earlier. I had my towels with me. And I walked in and right there in front of me, well, first I walked in and somebody hollered at me from across the store. Where's your mask? And I said, I don't have a mask. Well, you're going to have to wear one. And so she walked over to me and handed me this mask. Everybody in the store had a mask on, whether vaccinated or not. Ah, don't even get me into the mask situation. Okay, so I put on the mask. I wasn't leaving because they had the most beautiful batiks that matched my new, new, new towels. So I did not, I had already decided I didn't want to make a quilt. I've got this quilt, which is absolutely beautiful and looks amazing in the coach. Amazing. If I had known to start with, this was going to go there, I would have made it bigger. And I can, you can tell it's pretty big. This is blues for Jeff. It's pretty big. And I'm getting ready to bind it. I'll tell you about that in a minute. But it's not big enough. It covers the top of the bed, but it doesn't hang down over the edges of it because it's a king size bed. So anyway, walked into the store with my towel. And I found this fabric right here. I found a whole bunch of fabrics. <laughs> but this is the one. We have navy blue rugs that we had in coach number one. So for the time I was there, I thought, oh, this has navy blue in it. Oh, and it has my towel in it. Oh, this will be perfect. So I've got, I don't know, 10, 12 yards of this stuff. I'm going to sew this together into a king size bed spread, all the same material. And then I'm going to quilt it with double thickness batting. And this is going to be the bed spread. This is going to be the towels. So I thought at the time that I was going to keep the white chairs in the trailer and I was just going to make covers for them. You know, you can do that. So, I decided to get this because it has the navy blue and it has the color of the towels and it's out in the other room. So, I was going to cover the chairs with this. And I still might do that for the two chairs that are in there. I'll show you when I get it done. So, I've got five yards of this. <laughs> It's enough to cover 20 chairs probably. <laughs> but I liked it because it had the navy. And so then I also had some footstool situations. And I thought, oh, I need a footstool. I always have to have a footstool. My feet swell quite badly. And I've got to keep them up most of the time. Because, you know, I hate wearing those sucky socks. Y'all know I have to wear those. What are they actually called? What are they really called? Not support hose. Compression stockings? Maybe they're called compression stockings. It'll come to me as soon as I'm done talking to you. <laughs> so I thought this was really pretty, and I would put it out in the when you go right in the door and the two chairs are there. So that's what I bought that for. So then I thought, well, I've got the two super, super cheap Target um, footstool things. I'll show you those too. And I want to put pillows on top of those. So I bought this <laughs> this one right here to put in the same room with it and then this was going to be the footstools and this was going to be the chairs so i took a picture of this i just took these fabrics in there i took all these fabrics in the coach when i got back from Louisville, and i just laid them out in there and then i took a picture from like where you first walk in the door and i took a picture to see how i kind of liked all of the colors together so i'll put that picture right here. Okay, <laughs> so it doesn't make a hill of beans difference if you like that or you hate it because I'm not going to do that now. <laughs> I changed my mind every five minutes. Still going to do 
This is for the bedspread, which you saw in the picture. Still going to do that for the quilt for the bedspread. Bedspread quilt, whatever you want to call it. But the other two fabrics, I'm not going to use at all. So just this for the bedspread, this for the towels. Some of you may remember that I am crocheting a blanket this color. <laughs> So far, I've got at least 12 skeins of yarn in it so far. And I just asked my daughter to make me eight more skeins. Tammy said, Mom, people don't make blankets. They're just way too expensive. You are making a treasure, a family heirloom. <laughs> oh, well, praise the Lord for that. So I will have that out there on the couch area, okay? And it matches all of this great. So I will have my crochet blanket, king size bedspread, and my towels. I might use this one because it looks really cute with that one, I think. What do y'all think? You like this one with this one? I might make some um, pillow shams, pillow shams. I think I'll make some pillow shams and mix this with this or something. Or maybe I will use this for the binding. I don't know what I'll do. Maybe I'll use that for the binding. I wonder how this would look for binding. Oh, I don't know, but aren't they pretty? Aren't they pretty batiks? Cost me about $300. I need to take you back into the other room where my embroidery machine is because we have to embroider something on towel number four that I have already done on towel number one, two, three. So this is my quilt with an all over pantograph on it. I did not want to do it the way it was supposed to be done. You know, Jeff was going to teach me how to use my quilt path software. And this was built to do that with. And so there would have been, you know, like a different design here and a different design here and a different design here. And it would have looked like I took a class to do it. So since it isn't going to happen that Jeff is going to teach me how to do that, I did an all-over pantograph on it, and I think it turned out great. I'll take the camera off and show you up close, okay? I used a variegated turquoise thread. I thought, oh, I'm going to use this. No, I'm not going to use it. Yes, I am going to use it. No, I'm not going to use it. Yes, I am going to use it. No, I'm not going to use it. I thought it's going to look terrible in the light parts. It'll look good in the dark parts, terrible in the light parts. I may ruin the quilt. Um, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. Then something said to me, go with your first choice. <laughs> the camera's so low, I don't even know if you can see my eyes. <laughs> go with your first choice, so I did. And I am so glad that I did. Let me do a close-up for you, okay? I don't remember the name of this. I think it's called Edgewood. Edgewood. I think that's it. I bought it from MyCreativeStitches.com. It was one of their monthly mystery sets. And their monthly mystery sets are like almost $300. But if you buy them without knowing what they are, before they make them, you get them for like $50. So this is one of them. I bought three or four sets. And this one's called Edgewood. And so it's quilted borders, sashing, and everything with this Edgewood. Let me get it up close enough you can see the color of the thread. It's sideways, I know, but I think you can see the variegated thread in it. Isn't it pretty? Ah, oh, very, very happy with how it turned out. Let me get reset up and I'll be back in a minute. So about the towels. The bathroom in RVs is itty bitty, teeny weeny, yellow polka dot, bikini. <laughs> you might be able to fit one of those in there if you're lucky. So small Jerry and I can't fit in it together. There's no bars to hang your towels on. There's no place to put a bar to hang your towels on. The only thing in there, in both of our RVs, is a two-prong hook 
Well, it goes like this. I can't hook my fingers the right way. <laughs> a two-prong hook <laughs> at the top of the door. Okay? Two-prong hook. The hooks are very close together. Like this. That's, that's it. Okay? Play like an amador. So, you hook your towel up there on the door. You hook your other towel up there on the door. So you've got two of these humongous towels hanging there next to each other. They take up the whole width of the door. Every time you open the door, the towels fall on the floor. When you're driving the coach down the road, the towels fall on the floor. I keep running down the hall, putting it back on the hook, running down the hall, putting it back on the hook. So with RV number one, I came up with this solution. I wasn't as good at it in number one. In number one, I just went to my regular sewing machine and I sewed as best I could a circle with just a regular sewing machine. Sewed a circle. But it was uneven and it wasn't attractive and it worked, but I thought I could do a better job. So this is what I decided to do. So what you do is you find the center of your towel going lengthwise. This is my last one. I saved one so you can see how to do it. So you find the center, you find the top side. Do you know what the top side of the towel is? I'm sure you do. The top side of the towel is where the binding on the edge, you can't see where it's been folded over and stitched. Okay? This one actually looks pretty good on both sides, but you can see. So you can see here on the end how it was folded over into here. So this is the right side. In my opinion. So you come down whatever amount. I didn't want to put it on the very, very edge, so I knew I needed to have a little bit of bulk, you know, on top of the hook. So I came down three quarters of an inch. I made my hole three quarters of an inch. So I'm going to come down another three quarters of an inch. Now I need to know where the center of that is. And of course, this doesn't have to be exactly, exactly perfect, but it's going to be as perfect as I can figure it out. So half of three-fourths is actually three-eighths. Because three-eighths and three-eighths is six-eighths. And so you divide that with twos and you end up with three-fourths. So three-eighths is half of three-fourths. Yes, it is. And when you're drawing on a towel, the thickness can be weird. So then what you have to do is you have to get one of those snowmen people. Let me go get one. I have a Baby Lock Elisimo, which I got 12 years ago, and I have a Baby Lock Solaris. Both of them use these little snowman placement stickers. They're sticky. See, they can stick to you. So you stick them on Whatever you're about to put on your embroidery machine, it doesn't matter if what you're putting them on, I'm going to move it over a little bit. It doesn't matter if what you're putting it on, it doesn't matter if this towel is straight or crooked. It just matters that the snowman is straight and the machine will straighten what it's about to sew with that snowman. My Bernina would not do that. I would not trade this machine for any other kind in the world because of this snowman and for nothing else. <laughs> I really like this little guy. So what I do is, what I have done is, I've never done this before now, I did two layers of aqua mesh. I don't want this white backing to show on my towel. I want it to wash away. So I put two layers of it in this hoop. I figured, this was my practice circle. I used a washcloth and I doubled it. So that was my practice circle. It turned out great. So I have done towel number one, towel number two, towel number three. Towel number three still has a hole in it here. So what I do is, 
heavy duty shipping packaging tape. So what I do, and you know this stuff always curls up and you can never find the beginning again, so you have to scrunch it. Scrunch. So I cut a piece of this off and I stick it on the front. Then I turn this over and I cut another piece of this off, of course bigger than the circle that's missing, bigger than the cutout. So I've got tape on the back, tape on the front. I put it down on the table and rub it. So this thing is very secure and solid again. And I have room right here to tell it to put the circle that I want to sew out. I'm making circles because when you hang a circle on a hook, it doesn't matter how much you wiggle or jiggle or close doors. Let's try this. See? It doesn't matter. It can't fall off. And these towels are heavy. So, that's what I do. I put a hole in it and then I just hang the hole on the hooks. And oh my goodness, they stay wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Obviously, I cannot hoop this towel. I would have to hoop it in this hoop right here, and it is very thick. And I would have to start over with this stuff right here because I wouldn't be able to see under it. So what I'm going to do is find my snowman. I've got a towel here so I won't get temporary sulky KK2000 lovely and I'm going to spray the back of my towel I don't know it's about six by four area there six by four area then I am going to tape tape it not tape it tape t-a-k-e I am going to glue it down to this area I've only got this one area down here left so I am going to stick that snowman right down there. I am. And there he is. He is stuck. Now, you could put a couple pins. You could. You could. You don't have to. You kind of just have to juggle it. and you might want to wait until you actually get over there to the machine. Hello, there's the camera. And do it then. Doesn't matter. Ah, come on now. So I'm using two of my long arm pins. Now remember, this is a circle I'm sewing in here. See? There he is. There's the four holes I've already done. I'm going to do the last one right there. I'm going to go put this in my embroidery machine, and it's going to embroider a circle. Let me turn you around. Okay, I bring you over here. I brought you over here. I brought you over here. <laughs> to my Artista software. This is where I started. I made a design. Let's open it. There it is. It is a circle. It sews a straight stitch, it sews a little zigzag around, and then it sews a satin stitch around. It's very sturdy, and it doesn't come out, and it makes my circle look like it's in the towel on purpose, okay? So then, I put the design on this flash drive. It was right over here in my computer, and I sent it to this flash drive. Then, Then you take the flash drive over here to your embroidery machine. Very easy. Now, I have paid for the upgrades, thousand bucks a piece, for this Solaris sewing machine. It is supposed to pick up the design wirelessly, but it doesn't. I don't know why. I don't care. I put it on the flash drive and it finds it. So, let's go into the Solaris. Everything's going to move all around. Please wait a while while we move around and see if anything's in the way for it to crash into. And there isn't, so it's coming back to me. So we're going to pick embroidery. 
and we're going to pick the pocket <clears throat> and we're going to pick the little thingy that means find me on the flash drive <laughs> and there it is on the scan disk and there is my circle right there yeah it's up there okay so I need to put the hoop in or it's not going to know where to put the circle at is it so let me line the camera up a little closer here and then you can have the extreme excitement of watching this circle so out <laughs> It really does excite me, believe it or not. <laughs> you got to have your hoop, you got to have your towel, you got to have your snowman. Now, I hope I don't completely block you off getting this on here. You all know how to put your hoops on your machine. That's kind of the first thing you have to learn. Now, it's very important to hold the weight of the towel. This is very heavy. And so I hold it. I'm going to hold that part there. I'm going to put this part, I mean it's only going to sew a three quarter inch circle on this gigantic towel. So, there's my little hoozy. Let's tell it to set. Alright, let's do layout. Let's find the snowman. Now let's tell it to find the snowman. It is so cool how it does it. I hope you can see this. Let me see. How can I show you this up close? Watch this right here. Hopefully you can see this screen really good. It's going to find the snowman. The snowman is going to turn red. And it's going to find the bottom half of him. The lower part of his belly. And it's going to line this up perfectly straight. It's not going to be straight with anything except the snowman. Okay, so I'm going to tell it to scan. The carriage will move, and we're going to find the snowman. Look, he already found it. Do you see the snowman turned red? It found him right away. So there, it just threaded the needle. It's never missed once. It always threads the needle. Ah, I love it. Okay, so now we're going to tell it to sew. See the start stop button right there? That's all you do is push that, and you don't have to have this thing. You can use your finger. Start. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I forgot something. Who knows what I forgot? Raise your hand. Raise your hand if you know what I forgot. <laughs> I know a bunch of you are saying it already. When you're doing towels, when you're doing super plush fabrics, you want to put a stabilizer on top. And so I'm going to put a stabilizer on top so it holds all of those little fluffy things sticking up. It holds them down flat and it will sew much better. So I'm going to get that now. This is water-soluble, sulky stabilizer. It goes on top of things. See, so I'm going to put this on top and it's going to hold all of that thick pile down flat. I'm going to spray some of that same glue, that temporary glue on it, and I'm going to stick it down. Here's a little piece I cut and it has that same glue on the back that I put on the back of the towel. I'm going to glue it down much farther around than how big the circle actually is. I've got the wash away. Now this stuff on the top washes away and the two white layers on the bottom wash away also. Okay? So let's hit go, Joe. Hold it down to start as much as you can. There we go. It only takes 30 seconds. It just zigzagged around the hole. Now it's going to do a satin stitch around that. This is just a wonderful, wonderful solution for being able to hang your towels up in an RV. I like my grandchildren who leave them on the floor or under the bed. This is done. I'm going to pull it out. Now this is the hard part. This is the hardest part, really. The hardest part is cutting the center out of that little circle. That is the hardest part. So that's the front. This is the back. See how I used the same thing? I never did rehoop. I did four towels with this plus my original sample. Ah, let's go over to the table label. Now since this is my last hooping, I could just remove it from the hoop, but I just want to show you how easy it is. This just tore completely off. I'm going to take the center out, that tore completely off, so there's nothing to dissolve, that's gone. Except for the part that's under the stitches. 
So now pretend like I wanted to use this again, which I don't, but we'll pretend. How did I get the towel off? I just cut a hole. That's why you see all these holes in this. <laughs> I just cut a hole all around. Cut a hole all around. Yeah, and you gotta have music on. When I do stuff like this, I usually have music on. Okay, so see how I just cut the hole out. And now that I'm done with all the towels, I'm just gonna toss this. I'm done with it. It worked great. I am so glad I was able to use it all those times. There's the back. Here's the front. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take a teeny tiny rotary cutter that I've evidently taken somewhere because I don't see it. There it is. Teeny tiny itty bitty. And I am going to roll a hole in the center of this hole. I'm going to roll a hole. Roll a hole. There is a hole in the middle. I'm going to do it from the back as well. Don't go too far like I did on one towel and I cut through my stitching. Don't do that. So can you see? Can you see there's a hole in the middle? A hole. So then find your sharpest little scissors. Your sharpest. Good luck. <laughs> I've got very expensive scissors and still it's really hard to find some that cut all the way to the point. So I'm cutting around the hole inside the stitching. I'm being very careful not to cut that satin stitch. Ta-da! 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 Oh my goodness, the RV is such a mess. I have another thing to tell you about too. You know, the table, put my sewing machine in, 220 something dollars, I ordered it. Well, it's been in the coach for a few days without a sewing machine in it. And Jerry mentioned something last night about, are you going to keep this table in here? Well, I always hate doing anything that he doesn't like. And he was tired, he didn't really mean anything, but I said, fine, I'm just going to take it out of here. I won't even sew. So this morning we hauled the table out. I was going to return it to Amazon. So I came in the house to do a return and it said, you're going to have to ship this back yourself and pay the freight. Well, that table weighs 40 pounds in a huge box. So I told Jerry I'm keeping it. Are you serious? Yes, I'm very serious. So he'll get over it in time. You know. Of course it's ugly. Of course it's not a pretty attraction and Jerry and I are very picky about our surroundings and our furniture. But I need to have a sewing machine in there and I just have to get him to lower his perfectionistic standards. I mean, you think I'm a perfectionist. Oh my heavens, when it comes to paint and wood stain and the arrangement of furniture, Jerry not only drew this house, he drew this entire house himself he drew every single piece of furniture, every couch, every chair, every table, every hutch, everything. And he put those in the plans where they were going to go. And except for this room, which is mine, <laughs> all the furniture is still where it was, the way Jerry drew it in the plans. Very true. Which is a good thing. I grew up with furniture from Salvation Army or the dump and my daddy would bring it home and he would refinish it in the garage and make it look brand new but that's not good enough for Jerry alrighty so let me show you what I have now I have the hole that's the back of it I have the pink markings I made on the front and the snowman that's the front of it I'm gonna go wash this in the sink and all of that is going to come off hold on I'll show you so I got it really wet I wrung it out I squished it with the dry part of itself open it up the white part is all gone 
the pink part is all gone and the glue is all gone. I'm going to go downstairs and put this in the dryer and then I'm going to take you over to the RV and show you what they look like. Here's two towels. Here's the super teeny tiny itty bitty potty. It's <laughs> right here. Not only is it small in there, the door opens weird. See how the door opens? It opens into the bathroom. In RV number one, it didn't do that. It opened up like a normal door, and so it gave you more room in the bathroom. I don't. I think the reason they change it is so you can get into it when the slides are in. I think that's the reason for it. There's the two hooks I told you about. You see, they're right here. Two hooks. So, and we like big towels. So why don't you buy smaller towels? Because we don't like smaller towels. So I'm going to use the end that doesn't have the hole in it to show you how much room they take up and why they won't stay there. Ah, see? I can't even get it to stay there. Hang. When it's wet, it hangs a little better. Okay. That might stay two seconds. <laughs> and then hang that one next to it. And there you go. Evidently, the RV people expected us to hang our towels up there. I don't know what we do if we had kids or company or whatever. But you can see if you open and close the door. Oh, oh no! <laughs> so one's staying on at the moment, but the other one is on the floor. Usually they both fall off. Take the other end of the towel where I have the holes. So you put one on that hook, and you put one on this hook, and you could be in a tornado, and these things are not gonna fall off the door. Do they, sideburns? No. Nope. Always, always stay. Only thing is, they're too close together, and they take up too much room. So what I did was, I found the only other place here that I could hang a towel up after we take our showers. And that's back here. This is our bedroom. It has a door. Can I see the door? That's our door. Hello, good morning. So what I did was, if you're gonna buy one of these RVs, you've got to buy command hooks. You have to have them. And I put one back here on the other side of this wall so it doesn't show from out there. So I was walking around just talking, talking, talking and didn't know my battery was dead. So here I am coming out of the garage of my house. That is RV number one. That is our Jeep that we pull behind both of them. So I'm walking down our driveway. That's parked on our driveway, number one is. So you can see over here is number two, see, right there. And you can see we live in a park already. We already live in a beautiful, beautiful park with a huge, 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 huge lake. <laughs> it's like, why would we ever want to go anywhere? Well, because of you. <laughs> we want to see our friends. I have a new friend. And she's invited me to come see her. So this is what we had to put in. Remember I told you the guy was coming to put the 50 amp boxes in? So there's one of them right there. So how handy is that? So you can see over there's Jerry's barn. And this is what I was showing you. My camera went dead. Over there. Let me see if I can not walk over there. See there's his bulldozer. And we paid, I don't know, six or eight, paid for six or eight dump trucks full of dirt. And so Jerry knocked down, I don't know, six or eight trees back there behind his barn. And he is going to level out all that dirt and then cover it with rock like our driveway. And then the RV will be parked back there. And there is another 50 amp, 30 amp, whatever box back there on the back of the barn. You want to see it? Well, of course you do. Here's some of the trees that he cut down. That all has to be burned. There's a great, great, great big mound of trees to burn in another place. See all the dirt? 
And that's after he already smashed down a whole bunch of dirt. His neck is better. He's been doing real good today. So there's his dozer. And over there's his tractor. And there's our internet. Ever since we got that thing, we have wonderful internet. Praise the Lord for that. So, this is kind of part of our backyard. And if you walk down, that there's a path right back there behind his dozer that takes you to the big pond. Jerry built two ponds, one little one and one big one. So you can see back here, big place to park the RV and there's the box on the back of the barn to plug in the electric. So this is one of those very weird videos that I do now and then. <laughs> a little of this and a little of that and over here and over there and the battery go dead and forget where I was. Jerry has totally, totally rebuilt the back mechanisms. You know the thing that makes the TV go in and out and in and out? He has totally rebuilt it. We had to buy a new TV because the first one didn't work. And it was one inch bigger diagonally because we couldn't get the same as we had before. And so he had to cut off that great big steel arm in the back and redo the holes. And he's just amazing at figuring things out. But we had to take the TV off, put the TV back, take the TV off, put the TV back, take the TV off, put the TV back. And we're going to have to do it again, so I have to go help him. So I'm going to say goodbye for this video, but I'll be back soon and show you what I did about the ugly blue rugs we're not keeping in there and what we're going to do instead and how I'm going to set up my sewing machine. I'll see you then.